Thanks for tuning in at Brackies. Hello everyone and welcome to the 14th episode of how to make a 2D platformer in Unity. I hope you have had a Merry Christmas and a great New Year. It's 2015 now and we're going to kick it off with Enemy AI. This is probably the uh, most exciting tutorial we've had in some time and uh, enemy AI can be very difficult and hard to wrap your head around but I promise you we're going to be using some great tools to make the process easier and that are also very powerful for doing many kinds of AI. These tools are free and uh, what the tools don't provide I've made for you. Cool, so as always I uh, suggest you check out the 2D Assets Pack available at brackies.com uh, because we, if we open it up here uh, I have the final scripts in here under the scripts folder and I've also made an enemy uh, inside of the sprites 2D platformer here you see the alien spaceship it's uh, nothing special uh, it's pretty tiny there but here he is and that's what we're going to be using as an enemy for now cool um, also if we head over to Chrome here, you can see that I've made a new forum post on the forum.brackies.com. And uh, in here, I showcase Wave Incoming. Uh, it's still a way, uh, work in progress, but it's basically a game I made with a, a good friend of mine uh, in just about 48 hours attending DreamHack. And uh, I've made all of the code publicly available. I'm just touching up on some bugs and implementing the final audio. And uh, you can see here all the code is here and you're free to use it. I've made a license file which suggests how you should use it. Uh, so check that out. Also, I'm working on another really cool project and uh, I won't tell you too much, but let's just say it's going up on the Unity Asset Store. Cool. So back to the tutorial. If you have any questions, Go to the forum and uh, I, I'm there, many others are there waiting to answer your questions. So what we're going to be using today for AI is a solution called A star pathfinding. There are many different pathfinding al algorithms out there. And um, another really good one for Unity is uh, the Rain engine. Um, but for simplicity's sake, and also because I've just used it in Wave Incoming, we are going to use the uh, A-Star pathfinding algorithm. And that is freely available. So let's head back to Chrome. Let's search for, search for A-Star pathfinding Unity. And it's the first one that pops up here. The uh, Oh, I don't even want to try to pronounce that, but you have the URL right there. And we're going to click on that. Then we're going to go under download and you're simply going to download the newest free version. Uh, free is going to be more than plenty for what we are doing here, don't worry. And uh, you might want to stay out of the beta because there can be bugs. So just download the new, uh, newest stable version here. I'm using 3.5.2 and the version of Unity I'm using is 4.6. Now let's open up the uh, zip file here. You might want to extract that. Uh, just to make sure that uh, nothing goes wrong. So I'm just going to show it in, in a folder here, if I can get it to open. Maybe not. Let's try that again under our uh, downloads. There we have it. Uh, show in folder. There it is. Right click, extract all, extract. It's going to think about it. And here we can simply navigate through our folder and double click on the Unity package and it will start importing in Unity. Make sure you have Unity open while you do this. And then uh, as you can see, it's gonna import all this stuff and it's, it's quite scary just how much stuff it's gonna import. But it's very well written, it's very well optimized and it's very well documented. So there are plenty of stuff in here, but most of it we're not going to be using and all of it belongs under the A-Star Pathfinding Project folder. So you won't get any weird stuff cluttered around your project, it's just all in the A-Star Pathfinding Project folder. Now let's hit import. It's just gonna think about it for a sec here, so wait for Unity to import all of the assets. There's some images in there and, and stuff that might take just a, a couple uh, of seconds here. So while it does that, 
uh, we can maybe start organizing our project a bit because I think that our project panel here is getting a bit cluttered. So before we get started, let's right click, hit create and then folder and let's call this one animation. And let's drag in all of our animation files and animation controllers. Let's also make one for scripts where we can drag in all of our scripts. Cool, let's make one for materials. You can of course organize this however you would like to. So we're just gonna drag all of our materials onto that. Then we can maybe do one for sprites. Uh, so our muscle flash, that's a prefab, isn't it? No, that's a sprite. This is the prefab, so make sure to grab the sprite there. You can also uh, organize after um, uh, tags or uh, categories or whatever here. U Unity's made a lot of, of tools to help you do that. But again, just grab all of the sprites here. Our blue background, our environment map, our... Whoops. Mm, that shouldn't be right. Revert. Didn't want to change anything there. No. Okay, so Unity is behaving a bit weirdly here. Uh, so I'm just going to drag them in one by one. So let's take our astronaut sprite sheet, our blue background. Let's take our environment, our muscle flash. Uh, this is our player prefab, I believe. Yes. And uh, this is a pistol prefab. Cool. Let's make a prefab folder also since we have so many prefabs now. So prefabs. And we can drag in our muscle flash, pistol and player, also the GM, bullet trail and spawn particles. Just drag them under there. And uh, I think we're going to wait with, with an audio folder and all that. We don't have much more. Cool. So that was the boring part. Let's get started with some actual pathfinding here. So what is necessary to get A star pathfinding to work? Well. First of all, I just want to show you that on their website, they have this tab called documentation, which will walk you through pretty much any feature in a star. What you can also do is check out the get started page. If you think that I'm moving at a wrong pace or if there's something you don't quite get, it's going to tell you many of the same things that I'm going to do today. Cool. So what we are going to do here, I'm just going to check my time. Okay, so we're nine minutes in. Approximately. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an empty object, which is going to be like the master of our pathfinding. So let's hit create empty or control shift N. Let's call this a star and move it to the top. I like to keep all of the uh, GM objects and um, sort of um, uh, global uh, scripts at the top here. Uh, so let's zero out the transform. Let's hit add component. And what we're going to do is we're going to go under the uh, newly added component uh, category here called pathfinding. And let's click the pathfinder. And this has confused me a bit in the past because the pathfinding here is called pathfinder. But as a script, it's called a star path. So just know that it's pathfinder, but it's really called a star path. What we are then going to do here is we are going to go into the scene view and we're going to go out of 2D mode. We're going to hit F to focus on our empty game object. Then we can open the graphs tab and we're going to create a grid graph. There are many different ways of creating uh, sort of um, graphs that simulate where our enemy can walk. So there, uh, one of the first steps to pathfinding is uh, teaching the computer where we have obstacles and where it can actually walk. And one of the ways to do this is using a grid. And another very common way, especially for 3D environments, is making what is called a nav mesh. That stands for navigation mesh. And it basically generates this 3D mesh. Uh, sometimes it's a plane, it's actually most of the time it's a plane, um, that, that just shows where you can walk. But instead, we are simply going to make a grid graph, which is just basically a bunch of points 
uh, but just a bunch of waypoints that um, are placed wherever you can walk and then some non-walkable waypoints that are of course placed on obstacles or in holes or uh, on um, if you have any mountains that you can't walk on top of and all of that. So let's hit a uh, let's create a grid graph and we can expand it here and you can see that it lays out all of these points. But right now our grid graph is laid out on the wrong axis. So what most beginners do here is they simply rotate the whole plane and you will notice that that just simply doesn't work. So in just instead make sure the transform is zeroed and then go under the grid graph settings and you will see an option called rotation. And we're going to rotate it uh, 90 de uh, negative 90 degrees on the x-axis, which is basically positive 270. Then what we are also going to do, you will see that these uh, squares here don't update yet. They will in a sec when we go down here and hit scan. But first let's set some more settings. So first uh, we want to maybe expand this because this is currently very, very small. So let's make uh, this number, this number of nodes here, which is basically the number of points that we can walk on. Let's make that, let's start out with 100 by 100. That should be plenty big uh, for our current level. And you can of course always expand onto this. Then uh, we're going to keep the node size at around 1 and then we're going to center this so make sure it's set in the center here and then do 0, 0, 0 and you can see that again the cubes don't update but we should navigate using the lines here. Then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that down here uh, we have the number of connections set to 8 which means that we can move diagonally also and that gives a natural moving feel. And then under the max climb, uh, you can see that the climb axis is currently set to Y. And that is definitely not what we want because right now, if the climb axis is set to Y, it means that it, uh, our AI will think that it's walking upwards towards, uh, up, uh, towards a hill or something when it's really just going up on the screen here. And that's not what we want if we want to uh, make, say, flying AI. Then we want to na it to navigate freely on the X and Y and then be completely restricted on the Z. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to set the climb axis to Z and set the max climb to zero. Cool. Then we're going to check use 2D physics because we're using the 2D colliders that comes with Unity 4.6. You can of course uncheck this and use normal 3D colliders even with 2D sprites. I don't recommend it though because the 2D physics are pretty awesome. Then we're going to make sure that collision testing is set to true. And uh, the collider type is not going to be capsule, that will result in an error. Instead, we're going to be using either rays or spheres. First, I'm going to show you spheres, and then I'm going to talk a bit about why rays are better, for instance. So, uh, let's start with the sphere dynam uh, diameter of, let's say, 2. And uh, now we can go down here and hit scan. You can see that it creates this huge grid, and uh, all of the uh, blue uh, grid lines here rep represents the part of the area that we can actually walk on. Whoops, I should really stop rotating that. Uh, I'm simply going to rotate this back. So 0, 0, 0. Sorry here. Uh, and then negative 90 again. And we're going to hit scan again. There we go. So you can see we have all these different grids and uh, grid lines. And uh, actually I'm going to bring this in. This is way too many nodes for now. We're going to do 50 and 50 and center it out again here. That's better. It's scan. Cool. But currently our obstacles here, our platforms and our player and nothing in the environment is preventing the enemy from moving there. So now it can walk pretty much anywhere. So what are we doing wrong? Well, you notice that under the collision uh, testing tab, we have this option called mask. And that's currently set to nothing. Well, that basically means that we are currently not including anything as being obstacles. And here you can select different layers. So let's say if we selected the player, 
this is not what we want, but we can do it for testing, and then hit scan, you can see that our player is now being treated as an obstacle and the enemy will not be able to move inside of these, uh, this area right here. But again, it's not really the player that we want to avoid that's actually going to be their target. So what we're going to do instead is we are going to um, create some layers for all of our obstacles. So let's set this back to nothing. Let's uh, select what we want to be obstacles, which is basically the platforms here. Let's go and do layer, hit add layer, and we can clean up our layers a bit. So we have the player, we have the background. We are going to set this to obstacle. And then again, select all of them and now change the layer to obstacle. And now you will see that their box collider 2D will prevent uh, enemies from moving here. So when we generate the grid again, these will actually affect the enemy movement. Um, what we might want to do at some point is change these away from a box collider 2D because um, a polygon collider of some sorts might be more accurate. But for now, we're just going to leave it as is. You can do that on your own if you want to experiment. So now let's hit back on the DA star object. Uh, and we can go ahead and, and scan this again. And it's not working. That's because we have to add the obstacle layer to our mask. So hit scan. And you will see that now the algorithm is working perfectly. I really need to stop rotating this. This is second time now. So let's just try this one more time. So 0, 0, and 270 there. And for some reason, scan. Cool. Okay, so I'm just going to change away from the rotation tool here because apparently I can't keep my hands off it. Cool. So if we head into the game view here and enable gizmos, you can see that it's currently looking quite okay. But if we zoom in, you will notice that there's quite a gap between where uh, we can stand and where they can walk. So let's try and change this back to Ray and hit scan again. It's much, much closer now. What method you prefer using really depends on the environment you're making and how long you want it to take. For such a small grid as, like this, it pretty much won't matter performance-wise uh, because we're not going to be generating at runtime, we're going to be generating beforehand, but um, if you have this huge scene, there might be some variations. There's plenty of documentation on this, so if you're more curious than just selecting ray and hitting scan, please go ahead and read up on that. Cool. So now we actually have our navigation grid set up. So we can uh, uh, close down the tab here in the grid graph, and I'm also going to click the eye here to disable the, um, the grid view. Then we can tab away, and you can see that it has these red triangles where it cannot move. Now let's hit save, because we've made such good progress, and uh, let's go ahead and create our enemy. So, this is a pretty uh, good uh, place for me to split this episode up. So, uh, this was the navigation part. In the next one, we're going to be creating um, the enemy script that is going to utilize everything we've set up here. So, I'm sorry I have to split this up, but um, the next episode is going to be uh, just as awesome, maybe even more awesome, because then we are finally going to get something moving, hopefully, finally. Cool. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.